Hi, I'm Josh. Welcome to my used book haul plus Friday reads. So I haven't done a book haul in about a month or so, but that's more to do with the fact that I ha it requires too much forethought and planning. So I still have a lot of new books that I want to talk about, and I started doing a couple themed videos uh, last month, and I want to keep doing that, but it, that's going to require a bit more planning ahead. In the last couple of weeks or so in Ontario, so a lot of the restrictions have opened up, and I decided to brave the world and go to some local used bookshops as well as some thrift shops, and I've got a good supply here because they were fairly cheap and also I couldn't resist myself. I needed more books. And since it's in the month, I figured why not tell you what I'm reading these last few days of the month and the first few days of August. Without further ado, let's go. I split it slightly into genres. This first one is Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil by John Burt Burdett. And this is one I actually already bought on Thrift Books and I sent it to my sisters back in the States. But as soon as I found this at Goodwill for two Canadian dollars, I was like, she can, she can have that copy, and I want this one. This is a horror book. I don't know much about it. I just know when I looked at best supernatural horrors or best horror lists on Goodreads, I found this several times. Another one I decided to buy just because I recognize the name is If You Could See Me Now by Peter Straub. This is a very old book. I don't know anything about this. I just recognize the name Peter Straub. Next, I get a Stephen King, Rose Matter. I have several Stephen King already, and I'm not even particularly interested in this copy, but I'm someone who wants to collect all of his books, which means grabbing up a new copy every time I see something I, have, I don't already own. And then lastly, The Historian, which is a historical fiction the, uh, vampire book. I don't actually know all about this. I just saw this and I thought, I'm pretty sure I've heard about that. And I'm hoping I like it, because if it's Victorian, I probably won't. But I figured it's cheap and I haven't bought any books. I might use bookstore in so long when I want to. So now let's transition into classics, starting with horror classics. I finally got a copy of Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. Never read this before. Uh, I am going to this year. The next one is Charles Robert Maturin, Melmoth the Wanderer, which I think is a series of short stories about this monster. I'm not entirely sure. Honestly, I bought this because I thought, okay, it's a classic horror. I want to read more classic horror. And then I thought I found the audiobook, and then I realized I didn't, so I haven't decided if and when I'm going to read this. <laughs> and then moving on to just regular classics, Catcher in the Rye. This is a not great copy, but I mean, I paid $2 for it at Goodwill, and this is a book that I've wanted to buy for a while just because, you know, it's a classic for a reason. Next is Charlotte Bronte, Shirley. Don't know anything about this. I just, I figured, why not? And I figured hopefully I'll like it. Then James Joyce's Uly Ulysses. And this is the one that I'm not necessarily excited to read, but one that I'm sufficiently intrigued by as its place in history that I, I want to read it. I know it has to do with, I think, his time in some kind of war. Now, let's move on to historical fiction. I think this is historical fiction. I don't remember if this is actually maybe a memoir, but it's Memories of a Geisha. And I, I was hesitant to get this because I read some controversy about this, which was that the story that this man got from this geisha was supposed to be silent, and that she since released her own book, which apparently has a lot of inaccuracies. I decided to go with it because I couldn't find a lot of solid information about the controversy. Uh, next is The Sisters Brothers, a novel by Patrick DeWitt, and this is one that is came out, I don't know, sometime in the 2010s. I was so surprised when I found this at Goodwill. I don't know, I found it hard to find when I tried buying it on, on, on Book Outlet, not Book Outlet, on Book Depository. At least it's cheap, and I, I was really happy when I found this for, I think, 2 or $3. Next is Ken Follett's The Pillars of the Earth, and this is like a fantasy historical fiction. Up to now, I'd like avoided this like the plague, because it just isn't like something I would like. But the problem is, this is one of like the first audiobooks on Audible that I bought, because it was popular, and then I never read it. And I don't like the idea of not reading what I paid for on Audible. So when I saw this copy at Goodwill, I think it was, I figured it's $2 Canadian, so why not just buy it and try and get to it at some point, especially since it's already on your Audible list. Next was an amazing find. I could not believe I found this. City of Girls by Elizabeth Gilbert. Didn't this, this come out like late last year or early this year? I don't know if I necessarily was thrilled about this book. I know I've heard enough about it to be intrigued and really excited when I found it at Goodwill. Three dollars. Three dollars. Um, similar thing here, Crazy Rich Asians. I actually just saw someone try to read this and they did not like it. And then I got it there at a, it was either Value Village or Goodwill, which for the non-Canadians, that's just like a thrift store. 
Uh, next is Timeline by Michael Crichton, and another one that I figured, why not? I've seen the movie, and honestly, the movie doesn't make you want to read it, but I like time travel, and I figured it would be an easy, fun read. Now, moving on to nonfiction. We're almost done here. The first one is Breaking the Spell by Daniel Dennett, Religion as a Natural Phenomenon. It's just one of those books that I read as an atheist. I know I bought one of Daniel Dennett's books off Thrift Books and sent to my sisters. I don't know if it's his copy or not, but I figured for two dollars I'm willing to take the risk and I'll just give someone that as a gift. The next one is The Eden Exper sorry, The Eden Experience by Mark Vonnegut, a memoir of insanity. I haven't read any Vonnegut, but I figured again, two dollars why not just get it and if I love him, I love him. If I don't, I'll get rid of it at some point. So a bit of clarification here. When I bought that and even recorded this, somehow I thought that was the memoir of Kurt Vonnegut. I don't remember hearing about that book before. I was so surprised. I thought, oh, wow, this is such a cool find. I'll read it because why not? And now I realize it was his son's memoir, which honestly it still sounds intriguing. It's about his son's experience, I think, with schizophrenia. But it absolutely was not what I thought it was. I don't know how... I went through all of that without recognizing that was not Kurt Vonnegut. Next up is Long Walk to Freedom, the, no the autobiography of Nelson Mandela. And this is one I had actually never heard of, but I thought, here's autobiography on sale at a thrift store. Why not? And then one that I really would not have bought of, bought if it wasn't at Goodwill for so cheap, but Titan, The Life of John D. Rockefeller, Sir, Rockefeller Sr., I mean, Sir, by Ron Chernow. And I know Ron Chernow has a lot of popular um, autobiographies of some of the early presidents. And those are where I really came across this book initially. This person in history, this capitalist swine, isn't someone I'm necessarily particularly interested in, at least not a lot. But I, I would say I'm sufficiently intrigued. And I also think this is narrated by Sy um who was it? I forget his name, but he does like the Dune series. I'm just going to put his name up here. I don't like to have to do that in editing, but... And so I figured I like his voice, and I'm moderately intrigued by the topic, and I've heard good things about the author, so why not? Another one is John Meacham's American Lion, and I think this is winner of a Pulitzer Prize, and this is one that I figured, why not? I have another book that I read a while back by... NPR's Stephen Inskeep that I really liked called Jackson Land, President Andrew Jackson, uh, Cherokee Chief John Ross, and the Great American Land Grab. And this really highlighted the uh, really manipulative and vindictive and evil side of, of Jackson and a lot of the harm he caused. And I really like this book. I'm really hoping American Lion isn't glorifying him. Those are all the books that I bought. So now let's just jump to the books that I'm reading. There were four books three of them are non novellas that I was hoping to finish still this month, but I'm not going to. The one that I decided to start and to end up finishing this month was The Fifth Season, which is a reread of N.K. Jemison's um, first book in the Broken Earth series. I read this like a couple years ago and I had no idea what was going on. And even now I'm still struggling, but I'm still, I'm enjoying it a lot more this go around. That's just because I, I know that I have to pay really close attention. I have to be very careful with what I do while I listen and not to let my mind wander, which is so easy when it's something like this, where the world building is, it's one of the best things about this, but it's also one of the things that makes it really hard to follow along. I'm the kind of person who already struggles with books that have uh, names and places that are something I'm used to, and it's even harder when it's not. That doesn't mean it should be a bad book, that it shouldn't be read. It just means that I, I, as a reader, have to be more careful in how I approach it. But I'm really liking it. I have seven hours left on the audiobook, and right now it's 12 p.m. on a Friday, 31st. I'm hoping to get through this today, but if not, I'll finish it tomorrow. The other three books were going to be a reread of the first two Benti series, and then the read of The Masquerade, The Night Masquerade. But I don't know if I'm going to get to this. I know I'm not going to get to this month, and I have a lot of books next month that I want to read, so I may end up just pushing Benti to the side and either get to the third one at some point for the end of the year or hopefully reread all of them. But I, I made good track this month, which you'll see in my wrap up. Um, that's the only thing I haven't managed to get to that I wanted to. Though that's what I'm reading this weekend. There is a chance that I'll read Benti after I finish the fifth season, but it'll probably end up being my something that I'm reading uh, in, in August. That's what I'm reading. And those are some of the new books that I bought, well, new used books. I hope you enjoyed that. And, and as always, stay safe, and until next time, have a good day.